Nigeria has abolished the Special Anti-Robbery Squad, or SARS, a police unit that, as its name suggests, was established to fight violent crime. This follows days of protests sparked by a video shared on social media of SARS officers filmed in the alleged killing of a civilian. Demonstrators say that the ban of the police unit doesn't go far enough. They're promising to keep campaigning for SARS officers to be brought before the courts for their crimes. Nigerians accuse agents from the police unit of routinely carrying out unlawful arrests, torture and even murder. His bruises are still fresh after a violent attack a few weeks ago. Kingsley Amashi, a taxi driver, says he was almost killed when passengers assaulted him. He sought help from the police unit SARS, but he says that resulted in the officers trying to make money off his case. The next thing he said to me was that I was going to pay for investigation, and I was like, I can't afford it. And um, he insisted that I have to give him some money. I wasn't supposed to give you a dime. I mean, I, 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 should, I should be encouraged for coming alive. You asking me for money is more like killing me more. Hands up, hands up, hands up. Protesters say it's common for SARS to extort money. The police unit has even been accused of torture and killings. For the past few days, protesters have been out on the streets demanding an end to the unit. This is the young people of Nigeria saying that enough is enough. We keep getting oppressed and brutalized and nothing is changing. And we have leaders sitting there whose core responsibility constitutionally is to protect the life of citizens. When are we going to matter? We are tired. In Nigeria's most populated city, Lagos, protests usually last only a few days. People here can't afford to jeopardize losing their jobs. But this time, the protests have not stopped, not even after Sunday's announcement that the special police unit will be dissolved. A campaign that started online is still very much active, both on the streets and on social media, with people now demanding the release of arrested protesters and justice for deceased victims. But Kingsley Amashi doesn't believe that dissolving SARS will end police brutality in the country. When you put a rotten egg among good ones, just give it a little time. The good ones are not going to make the bad one good. Rather, the bad one is going to make the good ones bad. Let Mr. President speak to Nigerians. We want to hear him. We want to feel that he feels the pain we are going through. Even if you're lying, just say something to us. The founder of the movement, Hashtag and SARS, who started the first online campaign in 2016, is encouraging people on Twitter to keep on demonstrating. He doesn't want the protests to fizzle out this time without real reform. And earlier I spoke to Shegun Awosonya, who's uh, mentioned there. He's from the NSARS online campaign. He's been pushing to have Nigeria's special anti-robbery squad disbanded for years. I asked him why demonstrators are staying on the streets to protest, even after the government announced that SARS would be dissolved. Protesters are on the street because they felt that this is just another political pronouncement and they want to be certain, they need assurances that for this time around that they are going to actually get what they are asking for. For many years, from 2015, we've been hearing about uh, the disbandment of SARS, the dissolution of SARS and several other things and it has not materialized on ground. So this time around, they want to be sure that um, it's, they are going for it. That's why they are demanding for a presidential order in that regard. So despite the announcement, that's a, clearly a lack of trust in the police and government. Definitely. You know, the, the trust in the police has been waned over the years because of um, violation of human rights and also because of uh, many things that has been promised that was never kept. Okay. Um, so if these protests are going on as they are, what would be the measure of progress in these reforms that would get people satisfied? The reforms can actually be felt, not in the immediate, but much later. And but for the people, they need to see that police are actually respect, is respecting human rights on the street. They need to see that the abuse is actually being abated. But when police say that they have disbanded SARS and they are working on reform and they want us to believe and they want people to go back home, the same police officers who are trying to... Uh, um, Cop the protests are shooting at people and killing innocent citizens. So when people see this, 
it causes them to lose trust in whatever promises that police are making. So that's one of the reasons why it's been doubted. But the reform itself is not the switch because we're engaging culture. And in order to change what we have today, you know, we need to work at it and it will take it quite a while. But what they want right now are low hanging fruits, the things that they that can actually save them. In other words, they want the bleeding to stop so that we cannot begin to look at the root cause. And that bleeding that we're talking about is police impunity. The act of um, uh, violating human rights, the extrajudicial killings, the robbings, and the rest of it. So that's what people want to be assured of, so that they can go back to their normal lives, knowing fully well that when they see police officers, they don't have to fear for their lives. Okay, Nigerian police don't really have a good reputation. So what is it about SARS itself that has prompted this outrage? Yeah, for o over many years now, SARS have been known to be the killer squad of uh, the police. It's like the soldiers within the police system. And it was, an, it was a 28 years old um, ad hoc program that had been called cultured in impunity for quite a while due to um, institutional neglect or dereliction. But over the years, um, people have been keeping quiet about the abuses and all until it became, the pattern became a culture. And now they tell you to your face that I'm going to kill you and nothing will happen. And they actually keep their promises. So people now, after, with the advent of social media, people are now getting bolder to report these crimes and to escalate. And that's where people, uh, citizens and civil uh, society organizations started engaging and started blowing the whistle on this. That was Shegun Awosonya of the NSARS campaign talking to me from Abuja.